Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the risk dial is now at 55, so it's a long way away from the 81 of a week and two weeks ago. Does that mean anything? No, not really. What it really means is that the moving averages of the various risk parameters are bunching up and potentially indicating a significant period of sideways action, as we can see from this kind of graph. We could be in for another, I don't know, two, three weeks of absolutely no change in the relative values of asset prices, certainly possibly weaker stocks, but then that should resolve upwards in about a month's time. But in the meantime, I think that we need to stick to our knitting and have a look at the consequences of the CPI, which will be absolutely key to the price action in various assets next week. The short end this week priced in another cut, so it went from three to four cuts. As you can see, you know, we are 23 basis points higher than three cuts in Z4. And that is basically a little bit of animal spirits as a result of the NFP on Friday, which was a very good number. Everything was lower than expected, even the wages component. And therefore, a lot of people started thinking that the January figures were an aberration and therefore the CPI figures for January could be an aberration too. We will find out on Tuesday. The market is definitely rich and Biden coming out and saying that interest rates are coming down is probably going to make on Sunday evening and Monday morning the markets go up even further. But that is something that we will definitely look through until Tuesday. Tuesday is the big one and confirms where we are. I just know that we are rich and the odds of us getting more than three cuts this year I think are particularly low. So let's have a look at the pricing of the sofa. This is sofa Z4 and it got to exactly the level I said last week, 72 and a half, high was 73 and here we are. We backed off, we could not sustain it. Now on Monday, I would expect a little bit of animal spirits, as I said, on the back of the Biden comments and the pyjama traders are probably going to take it, you know, hopefully through there. But I think it's a big sell. I think anywhere around 80 is a very pivotal point and the risk reward is to short it against something which is longer out, which, is, which has duration something like three year to five year area because the belly of the curve is where all the action is going to be after the numbers either we maintain the uh, path of three cuts this year and another five cuts next year for a terminal rate of somewhere around three and a quarter to three and a half percent or we don't and in either case, the belly is the one that's going to take the strain. Technically, the two-year, just like the sofa, because that's what it is, basically, is trading perfectly um, against the levels. I think it's going to be very difficult for the two-year to sustain below 442, certainly before the number and after the number we see. But I don't think the two-year is the area that's going to move most I think it's going to be the threes and the fives because they are the ones that are going to be able to slide down the curve in case CPI is good let's say I mean the odds are that CPI comes in line and that maybe we get a slight revision down for January in which case I expect the threes to turn down and trade this 411 area and the five-year area to come down and trade around the 390 area and you know possibly go as far as 382 I certainly don't expect it to go through 382 but I do expect the yield curve to steepen slightly on the back of it 
we have tens and thirties auctions and I would be very surprised if over the course of the week we get the 10 year below 399 4% and the third year and the 30 year below the 420 level that he touched on Friday it's very unlikely that a inline CPI is going to affect the 10 year and the 30 year very much indeed and it'll be just a question of what the belly does against the tens and thirties before the auctions and nothing else unless the CPI is very low I think the tens and thirties have got nowhere to go to the downside so let's have a look at my favorite positions threes tens fives thirties what did the yield curve do last week? Well, nothing really, okay? It closed very much where it opened, which to my disappointment, because I thought it might go a little bit lower. But ahead of CPI, it's really not surprising that it couldn't do it. I think the three tens, if on Monday we see these levels around the 12 area, we get out. This will break one way or the other. Either we go down to here around... 5, 6 after CPI or we start breaking above and on a hot CPI number I really do expect quite a bit of flattening because the front end has got to give up at least 25 basis points so I showed you the sofa earlier the 95.73 area and then the 95.80 area which I think is a great shorting area ahead of CPI what will happen if we get a hot number? Well, a hot number will take out at least 20 to 30 basis points from the SOFA Z4. It'll go straight back to three cuts for 2024. And that will actually most probably make the threes tens actually steepen, sorry, flatten quite a bit. Fives thirties, more or less the same story, but n not quite. I would be surprised if 530s break much higher than these levels, around minus 6. Because I think the natural position is to believe the Fed and that in time they will deliver the terminal rate that they say they will deliver. And if that is the case, and that can only be negated by a re-acceleration of inflation which makes their argument uh, impossible to sustain in that case we will see a break above this kind of level this minus six but unless that happens the natural tendency for the yield curve must be to buy the three to five year area to then slide down the curve and in a year, a year and a half's time, two years time, have positive carry when the rates are at three and a quarter, three and a half, and have assets which are on top of Fed funds or very close to that Fed funds area. So five thirties to me has to steepen if we really believe the Fed and the terminal rate that they are indicating. If we don't believe them because the data just does not support their argument, yes, certainly we can, we can uh, flatten back up to something like this, zero. I just don't think that we can abandon what the Fed is saying so easily just on the back of one number. To me, 530s next week on a good number, test this kind of level, the minus two, minus three area. And on a bad number, we go and test the upside. We probably take it out by a few ticks, but that's about it. The belly is the one to own on any kind of a dip, which is not significant because it's not fundamental. We also have the ECB, and I think the hint is that they want to go at the same time as the Fed. They to believe that inflation is coming down and that they will reach their targets and I think they are far more likely to reach their target than the Fed in which case this is now the Bund and 
it's very unlikely that we break below 221 ahead of CPI. That, you know, the CPI will affect bonds nearly as much as it will affect bonds. And the two year is, I think, now absolutely stuck between this 268 area. You know, it's just very, very unlikely to come down below there, and certainly you shouldn't be a buyer. The bubble is the one that actually reacted most, but it probably has very little uh, room to come down ahead of CPI, and even then, it doesn't seem like it definitely will want to come back below this 212 area. I'm not a great buyer of, uh, of Germany at these levels, and I think this market, you know, the French oat says it all. We are basically stuck now at this 271 area, and it's more likely to trade 282 before we come down. But in any case, all these charts have got the same kind of patterns, that this 296 area is just too high, and then we are looking for the timing to start coming down. The timing probably is not an inline CPI. The timing has to be a CPI which is very, very good. And it's unlikely that we get it. All these charts are saying that it's unlikely that we get it. And therefore, on animal spirits on Monday morning or whatever, you want to get out of positions rather than put them on. The crosses between US and Germany did absolutely nothing last week. They have zero impulsion and therefore nothing to see there. This is tens, tens. You know, what is there to say? Even 30s, 30s close within a basis point of where they opened the week and traded in a very narrow range. So we are really not uh, having any clues from these markets. To me, the natural tendency is still for Europe to eventually break higher against the US but that is not being reflected in the chart so there's absolutely no point in talking about it at the moment. If the numbers are bad, the CPI is bad, I certainly expect the higher levels of these ranges to be tested. Absolutely no reason for Europe to get hit nearly as much as the US because don't forget CPI is released at 8.30 and then we have at 1 o'clock I believe we have the auctions of 10s and the next day on Wednesday of 30s. So all the pressure should be on the US as opposed to Europe and the natural trade if it, the number is bad and this, these 10s, the 30s, 30s and the 10s, 10s haven't moved is actually to buy bonds and sell the 10-year note. I want to have a brief word about Japan and tie that in with the yen on the FX. I think the two-year, and this is the two-year, has now basically reached a level which discounts any future abandoning of the zero-rate policy in Japan. As you can see, this 25 level has been pivotal all the way back to 2009. I doubt very much that the Bank of Japan wants to tighten very much, and that is why I think that we are within four or five basis points of the top. And the curve would indicate that, because look at what the five-year note is doing. It's not even getting to the previous highs and look at the tens, how much below the previous highs they are. The curve is normalizing. You are getting uh, two years at 19 basis points, five years at 37, 10 years at 72, but there is no impulsion for the whole curve to move higher. To me, this is a curve which is now discounted what the BOJ might do, and therefore, it's unlikely to me that the yen is going to appreciate a hell of a lot more. And I'll tie that in with what the dollar is likely to do. There is no doubt that the dollar was under pressure all week last week. 
it really didn't close all that bad and you can see that it's still above this 101.92 area which is going to be its natural support if it starts closing weeks below there it's you know there is more and more pressure on it why should there be pressure on the dollar right now well it wasn't coming from the euro really the pressure was all coming from the yen and let's have a look quick look at the yen you can see how important this 146 level is and how it caught tops and bottoms for many many months and if we actually try and enlarge this chart we will see that we are right on top of the 200 day moving average at 146 so to me it would take something really quite significant for the for this 200 day moving average to be broken and to start going uh, way below it in fact you can see what the where the bollinger bands are so i think for the early part of next week the likelihood is actually that the yen returns to this kind of level whatever that is 148 60 something like that so i don't think the pressure is going to come continue to come from the yen in the early part for us to have real pressure coming from the yen and continuing from the euro we really need to have some cpi numbers which are very very weak and which basically say that the spreads between the US and Japan and to a lesser extent against the euro are going to start coming in and the interest rate, interest rate differentials are going to start becoming less. That to me at the moment is unlikely. The only way that can happen is via US rates coming down as opposed to Japanese rates coming down I think that's unlikely they have reached a level where the BOJ wants them it's the US rates which are going to have to start moving and you know if we get a very cold CPI that is quite possible but I just don't think we're in a technical position to do it next week and I think that is very much also the message from the euro yen we are at the bottom of a trading range rather than being short you have to sell these kinds of rallies i think we are definitely reaching a top and then you know we are, the natural tendency would be will be toward to come towards this 157 154 area again but i don't think next week is the time i think you don't want to sell it down here you want to sell rallies euro yen topping out in my view i think the japanese have reached a level where they are comfortable holding rates for quite a while while europe is only now going to start coming into a cutting phase to me euro yen is the natural one it's just a very volatile cross and where you get in is very very important I'd much rather sell a significant rally back up towards 162 than I would to be short at 160. Gold had a stellar week, achieved all my levels and then bust straight through. What can I say about it? The more I look at real rates, I think the message it from gold is that real rates are going to come down, but that can only happen on a CPI which allows it to happen I really would not buy gold up here I think this is quite possibly a trap but even if it's not even if CPI is in line or maybe even slightly lower and that allows real rates to come down I think real rates are a much better buy at these levels than gold you know why buy something at yielding you zero when you can have something yielding you real two percent it just doesn't make sense to me but the central banks keep on buying it it could be a geopolitical thing it could be a lot of things i am just no longer a buyer of gold i'm a trader of gold 
And I think at some stage it comes back down towards this 2100 level or, or even slightly lower like it always has done. Don't forget this is that gold has done this many times and then come back. I don't think that it's going to be very different this time. I think if you're long, you need to take profits. And, you know, if you are, if you love gold, well, hold it because it's definitely breaking out against certain other assets. What is gold breaking out against? Well, it's breaking out against the commodities. This is gold against copper and it's definitely broken out. And it tends to have a decent lagged effect on bonds or signal on bonds saying that bonds will rally and real rates will come down. It is lagged, it can be lagged by many months, but that is the message from copper gold. The other asset it's breaking out against is DBC, i.e. a commodity basket. Can it keep on going? Absolutely can keep on going. If we have a look at how far this market has come, it came down a hell of a lot throughout throughout 2021 and can it go back to these levels absolutely which would indicate a another two three percent upside in that spread that is the most i expect from it so let's say dbc doesn't move at all that would give you another 40 50 bucks in the price of gold it certainly has momentum against commodities and but that is an argument for real rates coming down because if commodities are coming down or they're not going up that should mean that the economy is not as strong on the other hand that is just not the message that you're getting from equities in and it's not the message you're getting from the data the world economy is relatively strong you know i i am unconvinced that gold has broken and will continue the rally. I am a much better buyer of dips than I am a uh, holder at these levels. This is a longer term chart of gold against tips. I'm not really sure that it's adjusted properly for the dividends, but you can see that this kind of level has always been a very decent resistance. I just can't see unless we believe that inflation is going to do really weird things. But if inflation averages 2.5% over the next five years, say, which is more likely than not, then you're getting 4.5% return in tips as opposed to zero in gold. And gold would have to outperform tips by 4.5%. Well, I mean, would have to outperform everything by four and a half percent per year for this kind of ratio to hold to me that is very very unlikely and especially when you look at gold against tlt you're still way below levels that you achieved in november and it is terribly unlikely that we can just keep on rallying in gold i think we are at the top of a multi-decade range and I think it's more likely to be sold rather than bought. I just can't see why anybody would want to hold gold when they can have 2% real and if you fear that the real is higher well that is an argument for tips and not for gold. As I keep on saying, it's not equities, it's NVIDIA and a few meme stocks. This is the Dow, it's down 1% of the, on the month. And basically for the past five weeks, it has done absolutely nothing. So it's not equities which are going up. What is happening, as I've said, is certain meme stocks which are going up and down like crazy. But that eventually stops and when it does stop, then you'd start getting a return to normality. We had the first signs on Friday. This could be a key reversal. I don't know. I mean, who cares? What I know is that to me, this 5048 level is going to be absolutely key. 
I think at some stage next week we will probably test it and I have and I don't think it depends on CPI. Let's have a quick word on what assets should do on CPI. If it's hot, certainly equities should like it much more than bonds, but still dislike it. And if it's you know, in line, equities should like it because it means that there will be, there will be cuts by the Fed and you know it why should they uh, why should they dislike that well i think we might get a surprise i think we might get a a sale of equities on a cooler cpi i think there might be quite a bit of people saying well we've achieved or we've anticipated everything that was to anticipate in equities and now we need to rotate and basically buy more defensive equities or equities which have lagged and actually transfer some money into the belly of the curve, i.e. buy some bonds because those should appreciate much more. If you think about it, if we go from four and a quarter to 340, 350 in, um, in, in three, four, five year uh, bonds and MBS and things like that, well, that is probably much more of a move than you're going to get in equities, especially since equities have, you know, anticipated so much. So to me, this 30, 48, uh, sorry, 50, 48 level is going to be absolutely crucial next week. If we start closing below it, then we're going to fill all these gaps and possibly all the way down to these kind of levels. 4900 I can't say next week but I certainly below this 5048 I can see us going all the way to 4981 and filling this gap so I'm not positive for equities next week not because I know the number but because I think there would will be a surprise a surprise rotation away from equities when people expect the Fed to really start cutting because then you really need to rotate into the belly of the curve and if you rotate into the belly of the curve I really don't see why that is good for equities I would take some money away from equities and put it to work in something that can rally 10 15 20 percent very quickly let's have a look at the Nasdaq which on Friday had a pretty spectacular failure it, it opened above the close of the previous day and spiked a little bit and came down quite hard what is the level that I'm absolutely focused on it's this 17,650 on the net on the NDX I think if we start closing below there then we're in trouble until we do that, I think these dips down here are viable. And this chart very much matches the SPX chart. To me, it's a bad risk reward being long here. As I said, I think we might be surprised by the rotation on a decent CPI number into bonds. And this is SPY against IEF, that kind of five year duration area that I think that people would rotate into because it could appreciate on a weak number of, of CPI. You know, it, it's really done nothing for two or three weeks. And if it were to break down, that would give us the move that I'm expecting slightly better in the belly and, you know, people rotating out of equities. That would be the surprise move, wouldn't it? That would be the kind of logical, illogical move. I think the, you know, the, the bonds are getting really cheap against equities on a CPI which makes people think that, oh, this is great for equities. I think the big players are going to sell equities into it and buy the bonds because it's come a long, long way on an every measure that I look at, bonds are cheap to equities. So unless you think that the economy is going to roar away forever, 
and that we're going to get 15% kind of um, increases in, uh, in profitability per year, I think equities are getting very, very expensive compared to bonds. I'm not going to show you a chart of EEM because you know what I think. I think it goes to 42. And the only way it can get to 42, I believe, is if it outperforms the SPY. I don't see why it shouldn't be able to outperform the SPY. It's down significantly on the year, and I'm not really asking it for very much. It's, you know, all I'm looking for is a couple of percentage points, EEM doing better than SPY, and that is the kind of rotation that you would expect if CPI is okay, and as I said, the surprise becomes that you sell the highest uh, performing stocks to buy the ones that are going to benefit most from Fed cuts and a rotation into fixed income. So it all makes sense to me that you don't hold the expensive stuff like NDX and that you look for tests lower in SPY and you start rotating into emerging markets. Let's see what the week brings. The one thing I'm absolutely certain of is that you want to sell the sofas on the open if it's trading near that 80 level in Z4 and that you want to get out of the steepeners that we have, both 310s and 530s. I've changed all the levels. They don't really mean much before CPI. But after CPI, I'm pretty sure that you get this rotation if CPI is in line, that is. If CPI is in line, I think people really start believing the terminal rate that the Fed will deliver. And if that happens, I see no alternative to people buying the three to five, seven year area and riding that curve down. If that happens, it makes sense to me to rotate out of all other assets into that kind of area because you're almost guaranteed a 15 to 20% rate of return in a year and a half. Can you really say that about equities? I don't think so. And therefore, that could be the reason why equities go sideways for a while while bonds appreciate. That would make sense to me. But let's see what the numbers are and I'll tweet you on Monday.